All right, so this is my mini lathe, and I posted a video earlier about how it wasn't working, and you could go look at that. I'll put a link, but honestly, you'll hear the problem in a minute here, so it's not necessary. Um, so I had some, uh, I asked for help, and some people responded on the internet and told me that what I could do is um, check this potentiometer. A guy had a, this uh, had an issue where it was dirty or something like that. The wires for that lead back here to the red, black, and green. So I unplugged those from the board and I checked it out and it, and it checked out good. Another suggestion was to look for bad solder joints on the board. And I have to say for a Chinese motherboard and one of these little machines, it's really nicely laid out and they clearly used automated processes because the solder on the joints for all these little chips is, is really good. And I can even see some areas where they took some precautions to keep shorts from happening like the rubber on boots on here and there's even some on these uh, two big resistors here and stuff. So all that looked good. And one of the checks I did was where the motor connects to the board which is the white and the blue wire right here, here and here. And you'll see some video I'll show while I'm talking here where I put my voltmeter across that, turned everything on and adjusted it and so now my voltmeter was taking the place of the motor and I could see the voltage it was applying and it was applying voltage smoothly and evenly and there didn't seem to be any problem there. Um, so the next thing was to check out the motor and uh, he says you can put a 9 volt battery directly on the motor and if you take the, uh, the belt off it'll run freely and the 9 volt motor is enough to push it. Well I put a 9 volt on but I didn't want to take the belt off and so it was going so slow I really couldn't get anything from it. So I put a 14 volt power supply on there, which I knew was okay because when I measured earlier I was getting voltages much higher than that. And I did the same thing and the motor ran smoothly. So that told me my board didn't seem to be bad and my motor didn't seem to be bad. So I went to the internet and I found this guy whom I'll explain later and he told me how to uh, make adjustments which I'll also show later and that worked for me. So uh, watch the rest of the video and hopefully this will help you as well. Here's another point of interest. You'll notice this ground wire here, not connected. I believe it was actually connected, but they put it inside, stuck the screw through, and then carefully put it on the machine, because I did not disconnect that. So uh, e either that or it never was connected, and that may be part of the issue, but uh, that's important to note when you're putting the machine back together again, because I did not even realize that when I took it off. It just, I just saw that it was loose. Okay, you can see with 14 volts going to it, it's turning, and it's turning smoothly. No slowing down, no speeding up. I'm going to go the other direction now. Okay, so given what I've done in the past with uh, both the motor and looking at the board, uh, I contacted a professional guy online. His name is... Uh, UH, old UHF guy. I'll put a link in the description. I want to give credit where credit's due. He's very nice and uh, responded to my emails and gave me some tips, even though I guess he gets paid for this kind of thing. So that was really nice. He seems to think that what I need to do is adjust some of these trim pots down here, uh, specifically the one marked IRNCL. Uh, I'd like to be able to get back to where I am. I, I don't know, it, just in case it's not these trim pots. So I put a little mark um, on both the part that turns and the part that stays still so I can line them back up again to get back where I started. Maybe unnecessary, but it's always, I think, a good idea. So um, you can't maybe see it here, but what you do is you stick a little uh, Phillips head screwdriver in there and you just turn this. Uh, you can start all the way left and just slowly go right that kind of thing. Move back and forth between the two and see what kind of effect to get. That's all I'm planning on doing here. I'm going to do it with the machine running. Uh, so I've got the guard down. I don't think I'm good to go here on this. Um, plug, got everything all plugged back in over here. I've attached the ground directly with this bolt because this panel is actually supposed to be on. So let's start up and see what happens. Maybe I'll plug it in first. Stupid machines only work when you give them power. All right. That's on its lowest setting. You can hear it. So I'm going to bump it up to about 30%. I suspect it's this IR one that's giving me the problem, so that's the one I'm going to try first. Ah. 
That worked amazingly well. Well, that was easy. All right, so important to note, let me just stop this. So, the guy I contacted online, the old RF guy, I mean the old UHF guy, sorry, um, gave me a procedure and like I said it was kind of uh, involved and for adjusting the IR what was involved was letting it run freely at 30 to 50 percent like I was doing just now and getting it to run smoothly. Then you put a, a load on on the uh, maximum load, he said, on the motor. So I guess that would be equivalent to uh, when you're cutting something and you're taking a pretty deep cut. It's about as deep as you go. Maybe it's steel or something like that. That's going to load the machine down, and it may start doing that again. So what you do is you load it down that way and adjust this potentiometer. And then you remove the load, and you go back and you adjust that potentiometer again, and you try and get them so that the RPMs reading on the front of the machine is the same for both conditions. Then you've adjusted the IR pot correctly. Um, I asked the guy, how do you really load the machine? I mean, normally I would be cutting when I do that. I mean, do I have to come up with some kind of a belt or something? It sounds like it could be dangerous or whatever. And that's when he said, well, you know, you're kind of overthinking about it, overthinking it. Just go ahead and wing it. Uh, so I've just wung it and seems to be working so I won't really know if I if I did it right until I do put a load on it and see but clearly I found the answer to my problem because the machine works um, fine otherwise other than this issue so now uh, I think it's just a matter of playing with that so anybody who's got this issue and now that I've seen now you know how to do this I think it's just a matter of tweaking that a little bit to get there Okay, so that's consistently 312 RPM. Okay, so I think I got lucky. You could hear there I didn't have my my piece centered up. That's why it was making that noise. And I, I pushed it in pretty hard, so I think I was loading it a lot. And the RPM didn't change at all, so somehow I got really lucky when it smoothed out. One adjustment of the IR got it exactly in. So I don't really have a procedure for getting it just right, but I think if you have this problem, you might just go on there and, and just play with those knobs and see if you can get it to work just right. I think my machine might be working right now, and if it's not, I'll post another video. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this helps somebody. Okay, it's not really reaching the 1250 that it says it can reach. I'm not sure that I care, but it could be that I need to adjust a little bit more. Oh, and also a great big giant thank you to uh, old UHF guy for uh, giving me this free info and helped me fix this. It didn't cost me anything. Thank you.